Hello, everyone. Okay. I have a bad cough, so I'm going to just start out by saying, excuse my voice. Um, so, how many of you are familiar with emotional intelligence? Okay, pretty much everyone. How many of you are familiar with relational intelligence? A couple, okay. How many of you are in the business of relational intelligence, even though you don't know what that may be? Okay. So, relational intelligence is the process by which we center relationships. And I am a researcher of play and a consultant on relational practices. So, let's play a little bit. This may be a very familiar slide. If you worked with children or had children or have been around children, you know that they instinctively learn through play. But how about us adults? What happens to us? When are we going to catch up to the children? Research shows that for learning, when learning is occurring, we have synaptic connections being made in our brain. And it takes 400 repetitions for that connection to be made. And as Pablo was talking earlier, when we are in play, the learning, the repetitions take only 10 to 20. Yes. So what's play? Of all the population in the world that knows it best is at this conference, because improv is play. So, play with me. What is play? In your best possible playful way, whether it's quiet or out there, whichever way your style is, just turn to your neighbor, shout it out, whisper it out. We don't have much time, just 30 seconds, maybe 20. And then when the music stops, or rather I should say when the music starts, go. And when the music stops, pause. That's all. So, go. Music. Okay. That was a quick play. Just call out. What was play? What came up? Fun. What else? Freedom. Freedom. Pleasant. Pleasant. Present. Present. From the world? Flow. Oh gosh, I'm just making up words here. Flow. Flow. Thank you. Exuberance. Exuberance. Laughter. Laughter. Excellent. Scripted. Unscripted. Unscripted. <laughs> I've got a script, folks. Um, anyway, I usually don't do script. I challenge myself to go for this version. So... I, as a consultant of relational practices and researcher of play, use play as a methodology to inquire about what is play. I do play workshops all over the world, from China to India to this part of the world. And I start out by asking the very question you were kind of playing about, what's play? And then at the end of the workshop, I say, what's play again? Starts out with fun. And as you can see, very quickly, the differences are pretty stark. Improv is kind of hidden out there in the first, and it just comes forward. Creativity, engagement, learning. And the first one is more like child-focused, if you may, games, playing as an activity. But this idea that play is so multidimensional hardly is in our awareness. And this is thanks to Aristotle, that we are all following just like the mind-body split, how many of you do the mind-body split work, trying to combine? We have Aristotle to thank who divided work and play. So, that's a whole another call. Yeah, thanks. So, for me, what's most important in doing this work is to bring home this idea that life is a creative activity. 
I challenge research methodology too, so that's another whole workshop. For me, as um, Barbara was talking this morning, life is about bridges, and in play, we make bridges. As a person who's worked with couples and teams and looked at how we bring leadership and agency, what I notice is one of the first things to go when we get serious is, guess what? Play. And paradoxically, the one, the number one thing that we need most when things are stuck in the serious stuff of life, as Pablo was talking earlier, is play. So, here's a challenge for all of us. A number of you, maybe long-term, maybe new to improv. In your personal life, how many of you have had, whatever, with your partner, children, brother or sister, parents, how many of you have had an argument? Okay. Never. Right, right. Thank you. He's our consultant. So, how many of ever tried barking during that argument? You've tried. Okay. How, how many of you done any kind of gibberish? I mean, it's usually senseless to the other person what you're talking because now it's about me being right and you're wrong. So it's all gibberish to them anyway, but actually done gibberish. Okay. We all know our animals. Think again, 30 seconds. We have. Think about your animal. Think about a person that you're either mad right now or were mad this past week. Let it come up. Feel that. <laughs> Feel that energy. Remember your animal from last night. Using that animal, imagining that person just make that err sound. So if I was a dog, I was a lion, so I'll try the lion. Dog is easier for me. With my clients as a couples therapist, I get them barking in sessions. Um, so, try this. It's more like a monkey, but that was my lion version that was angry. Do your animal version for me. Look at the emotion. Emotion. Okay. Try that. And that's my question. How come we as improvisers have separated our life on where we do improv and the kind of improv we do and what we do or don't do in our personal lives or in other quarters of our life? For me, the question is, how might we approach our lives as the biggest stage of applied improvisation? I am challenging all my friends here with this question. How do we move beyond a mindset? How do we move beyond thinking of improv as tools, as games, as facilitation? How do we move to thinking about it as relational intelligence, where improv is just a way of being in play? Right? So quick wrap up. The first thing about improv that I, I learned was yes and. I've been doing it for 20 years. Never call it improv, by the way. Build, don't block. In my part of the world, the relational practices world, we talk about accepting offers, which is a familiar language here too. When you accept offers, you have to be responsive. You guys were responsive. I could do the crazy dog, angry lion thing because you didn't make me look bad because you accepted my offer and were responsive. In that moment, you made me intelligible. Anybody watching this video will think later on, if you guys are all silent, gosh, this person is crazy. But you were crazy with me. In that moment, we all let go, me included, of what it means to be a professional, what it means to be whatever idea we have of being at a conference, which this whole conference is about. And we embraced something that most people find it hard to do in the middle of an argument or when they're trying to make their case, which is how do I step into uncertainty? We know how to step into uncertainty because we get curious. In the improv world, we call it coloring and advancing. 
How are you detailing it, and how are you moving the story forward? And in moving the story forward, we make a good laugh. I mean, we just had a fantastic laugh, right? They just made it up. Can we take it beyond the stages of entertainment into our relational lives, where it is about reframing stories and getting to a place where we are making more generative, joyful stories? And so, as my time is getting up, I'm going to leave with a couple of slides, and that is the challenge on how do we live in all the other spaces but your improv spaces as playful beings. And if you would like to join me in that inquiry, here's my invitation and my last slide, and that is how might we inquire about the improvisational process of relating in our everyday lives at work and organizations. Because for me, improv is the turn-by-turn -turn relating with each other. Thank you.